Hi everyone, this is Kevin again, and um, I just kind of wanted to uh, make a sort of a, a video that's sort of a follow-up of the last video I made concerning eternal security versus conditional salvation. And, uh, you know, I noticed that there has been a lot of comments made on, not only on my video, but on other videos out there, like from David of, of Gospel Intelligence. YouTube channel and uh, uh, people that still don't understand what salvation really is and they don't understand the nature of it being eternal and being the gift of God so I want to talk about that again and I wanted to go through some more scriptures that I didn't actually uh, I don't I think there's some scriptures at least I didn't use the last time and just to you know sort of make it known that there's a difference between justification and sanctification and I think what's happening is it's being confused those that uh, think that they must uh, continually repent every day or continually um, confess their sins or try to live a, a life of complete holiness every day in fear of losing their salvation in fear of uh, you know well if, if the rapture happened today you know, would I be taken or would I be left behind because I actually told a little lie or, you know, whatever it is. Or maybe I got <clears throat> angry in the flesh and, and it wasn't a righteous anger or, or something like that. I don't think that for the most part, those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, those of us who are truly born again believers in Jesus Christ, I don't think that we're, you know, going forth and on purpose willfully trying to commit sin uh, on a daily basis I just don't see that happening and once you turn away from sin once you get saved uh, you turn in a different direction you turned away from sin you turned to made a 180 degree turn that's what repent means is to change your mind and it means to you know turn away from uh, and so you turned to a, a different direction when you came to Jesus for salvation that's the whole reason why you did get saved is because you wanted to be saved from the results of sin which is eternal damnation eternal torment and you wanted instead eternal life that only God can provide you by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone Jesus paid it all on the cross uh, you know when Jesus said it is finished just before he died on the cross that word in Greek is to tell us die and that word tetelestai also means paid in full if you go to a, a Greek bank and you go and pay off your loan they're gonna say tetelestai means paid in full um, so either you are believing that Jesus did pay for your sins on the cross in full or you're believing that you're having to keep your salvation or earn your salvation through your own good works and being a good person and trying to live a holy life I'm not, in no way am, am I saying that you shouldn't be uh, trying to live in righteousness and holiness I think we should definitely be doing that that's part of sanctification that's after justification you don't do it to just <clears throat> for justification or for salvation you do it after salvation because you become a new creature in Christ um, you become more and more like Christ as you go from a babe in Christ to being an adult in Christ um, that's the process of sanctification it happens throughout your life after you are justified after you are born again and it continues on until you either die or the rapture happens and you uh, then receive a glorified body that's glorification that's when you actually receive your glorified body and that point at that point in time once you are once you receive your glorified body you will no longer sin ever uh, there's still going to be times when you're going to sin and even the Apostle Paul said if we say that we're without sin we're liars we're, and the truth is not in us um, so there's still going to be times even now because we're sinners saved by grace there's still going to be times when you're going to you're going to fall, you're going to do something wrong, you're going to sin. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to get away with it as far as this life is concerned. 
God will um, chasten you. Uh, he, you know, he's, he chastens his sons. He chastens those of us who are his children. You know, just as you, if you're a parent, would chasten your son or daughter when they do something wrong. You don't disown them. Uh, you just chasten them. You try to teach them, no, you don't need to do that. That's wrong, what you just did. Uh, you chasten them. So I want to just I want to just go through a few scriptures here that uh, I had opened up uh, the book of Romans and Romans has a lot to say about salvation and uh, so does Ephesians and Galatians but right here in Romans chapter 3 there's a lot in chapter 3 alone and in chapter 4 okay so right here in chapter 3 verses 10 starting in verse 10 going through 12 it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So there you go. Showing that only Jesus, Jesus was the only one who lived a completely sinless life. There's, none of us can live a completely sinless, sinless life, even after you get saved. Okay? There's none that doeth good, no, not one. All right, so then right after that in verse 20 we see, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay, so by the deeds of the law you can't be justified. No flesh shall be justified in his sight by the deeds of the law. Why? Because you can't keep the law in its entirety. It's impossible for us to keep the law. You might be able to keep some of the law, but you can't keep all of it. And uh, and then down in verse 23 through 25, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Okay, so um, there you go again. The propitiation of the payment for sin was in his blood. His blood was shed to pay for our sins. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, believing that he paid for our sins by shedding his blood on the cross, that he was the Passover Lamb of God, and he was God in the flesh, <clears throat> the perfect payment for sin, <clears throat> we put our faith in him and we are washed away our sins are washed away at that point so uh, down here um, in verse 28 of also chapter 3 therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law okay you're justified by faith now uh, in chapter 4 he continues on he's talking about Abraham okay um, I'm just starting verse 1 what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertained to the flesh hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Okay? So, um, saying there again that Abraham, because of his faith, it was counted to him for righteousness. Not, not his works or his, you know, not his uh, good deeds or anything, but, but his faith in God. Okay? And then in verse 5 it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, now I'm going to go to... Um, I'm going to go to... Uh, Let's see, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I think you probably already knew that, but uh, also in chapter 5, verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And in uh, verse 6, I mean in ch chapter 6, uh, now this is uh, starting in verse 1 through 4. 
and this has to do with now I know that a lot of people are going to say you know uh, if you believe in this easy believism and everything that uh, you believe you can just go on and keep on sinning and everything's okay and you're still saved and everything but um, here's what it has to say right here but because we we know that still we're being justified by our faith okay it's by grace through faith Okay, but uh, here goes in, in starting in verse 1 of chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many as were, as so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So that's kind of actually uh, talking about the purpose of baptism. Baptism is not what is not part of your salvation. It doesn't save you, but it's showing what happened when you did get saved. It's identifying you with Jesus Christ, with his death, burial, and resurrection as you go down into the water. And it's like you're you know, going down into the water, is the death in the water burial coming back up is being is the resurrection being raised up into newness of life okay um, in verse 14 of chapter 6 says for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace what then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace God forbid now it's not there again not giving people a license to sin because you're saved by grace through faith, but if you do sin, um, you will be chastened. Like I said before, there will be consequences of sin in this life. But it does not take away your eternal life. Because once you receive eternal life, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Okay? Um, and there again at the, the, the end of this, you probably read this before too. Uh, verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord they're again saying again that it's the gift of God it's simply a gift you receive a gift you don't earn a gift okay um, I'm gonna go to once again I've been here before but I'm going to Ephesians chapter 2 And verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if it was because of your works, you could boast that you keep your salvation through your works, or, you know, that you uh, earned your way. Just like we do in this life, we have to earn a living, right? We have to go to work, we have to earn money in order to eat and have clothes and have places to live but that's not at all the way salvation works now it's purely grace it's purely unmerited favor that's what grace is so anyway um i hope that that helps a little bit and uh um, for those of you who do not know jesus christ yet as your savior i would just say to you that he did die on the cross for your sins and i've given you these scriptures today to show you that salvation is something that is a free gift of God and if you will just come to him just humble yourself and come to God come to Jesus Christ believing on him putting your faith and trust in him that he died on the cross for your sins he is God in the flesh and he took all of your sins upon himself on the cross and paid for them in full on the cross so that you could be saved so you could have eternal life the only alternative is eternal torment Okay, so I pray that you will make that decision that you want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, that you will put your trust in Him, and uh, we don't have much time left. The church age is about to end. The rapture is going to be imminent. The rapture is imminent. We don't know how much time we have left, but uh, once the church age ends, the 70th week of Daniel begins. And it's going to be like hell on earth. So, God bless all of you. And I uh, hope to see you in the clouds soon. Whenever the Lord is ready to take us home.
God bless.